Awesome. Thank you, Jamie. Let's give it up for Jamie. Woo! What a great job, Jamie. Thank you. Jamie, um, I have to tell you, though, wait, before you walk off, Jamie, before you walk off, this is not Cowboys country. This is Eagles country. Yeah. There you go. And uh, now, okay, I, I know whenever I do this in this area, it's not just Cowboy fans or uh, Eagle fans. Are there any Giant fans in the room? Yeah, the three Giant fans. We love you guys, but uh, our common enemy is the Cowboys, right? So, uh, but any Cowboy fans in the room? Yeah. Why are they always the loudest? <laughs> But uh, we love you guys, too. <laughs> uh, man, any Jesus fans in the room? Yeah, there we go. There we go. Well, Jamie told you, I, I am Philadelphia, West Philadelphia, born and raised. And you know what? I, I found that you don't go into the, you know, some guys... You know, a lot of the guys I work with, they're, they're more country guys, and they, you know, go out hunting and all that stuff. I, I am West Philadelphia, born and raised, and we just stayed away from people in the woods with guns. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, and, and if you hunt, no problem with that, but uh, this is my kind of gun. Take a look at this picture. Uh, there you go. I <laughs> think we got some chicken on the grill there, so, uh, but... Uh, seriously, I've been looking forward so much to being with you and uh, being able to, to share God's Word with you today. Uh, we're talking about legendary men, and so uh, I guess the question I have for you, is there any legendary men in the room? Okay, few of you, but you know what? I believe that God has a call in every one of your lives, and today we're going to talk about showdown in the promised land. And we're going to look at the book of Joshua, chapter 10, if you've got your Bible with you. If you want to open it up on your phone, uh, the Bible app is a great app. If you don't have that on your phone, let me encourage you to download that. If you've got a smartphone, if you've got an old flip phone, I'm not sure it's going to work. But uh, with this, I want to talk to you about legendary men. You know, Joshua is leading Israel. So Moses was the leader, and uh, Moses brought them right to the tip of the promised land, but Joshua, he handed off the mantle. And then Joshua brought him into the promised land. But with that, they faced a lot of challenges. But Joshua was there to bring them into their destiny. He was bring, able to bring them into their purpose. And, and I believe that, that, that there's a destiny and a purpose for your life. Turn to, you, turn to the guy next to you and say, God has a plan for your life. That's right. And with that, let me just tell you right now, there's a lot of people that are feeling down. There's a lot of men that are down. They're down because they're facing challenges in their home. They're down because of the economy. Uh, they're down because of their health and facing this. But let me just encourage you, don't go down without a fight. That, that with this, that legendary men, uh, when I look at it, they have a powerful reputation. Joshua chapter 10, verse 1, it starts with, The king of Jerusalem heard that Joshua had taken Ai and totally destroyed it. And he had also destroyed Jericho. And so with that, you know, they, they were hearing about this. And, and I think it's really important, listen to me, man of God, that the enemy knows who you are. He knows who you are. And he'll come against you with everything that he has. You know, when I look through this, a legendary man has a powerful reputation. And Joshua was such a legendary man. And I'm believing that today is going to be pivotal for you. It's going to be a pivotal day for you in your journey to be a legendary man. Uh, another thing about this is so, uh, so the king of Jerusalem hears about this. And as he hears about this, look at what happens in verse 5. It says that then the five kings of the Amorites, and so those, those guys in the area were the Amorites, and, and they joined forces, and they moved up all their troops, and they attacked it. You know, when I think about this, a legendary man holds on to his faith when he's attacked. The reality is, is that you will be attacked when you're living for God. People are going to test you. And it's really interesting that people that don't even like each other can unite against you. It's really crazy when you think about that. You know, when I look at this, I see that when you're serving the Lord, the enemy comes against you. 
He'll come against your family. He'll come against your ministry. He'll come against your marriage. He'll come against your business. But don't give up. Don't give up. Fight for the glory of God. And so with this, you know, they were about to do that. And, and, and I, I love what T.G. Jake says. He says, you faced your greatest opposition when you're closest to your biggest miracle. And I think that for some of us, we've been facing a lot of opposition. Let me encourage you that God gives the victory. A legendary man leaves no one behind. So here's what happens in verse 6. It says the Gibeonites. You say, who are the Gibeonites? It's really interesting because uh, there were a lot, of different, a, a lot of different cities in the promised land. So, so God gave them a promise, and he gave the children of Israel a promise. He, he, he charged Joshua with leading them into the promised land, but there were a lot of different cities there. There were a lot of different people, and they had to come up against each and every one of them. In fact, when you look at it, uh, there were 31 of them. And as Joshua went in and, and started taking them with the children of Israel and victory after victory after victory, that in the midst of all of that, there was one city, the Gibeonites, that said, they're going to destroy us. We need to align ourselves with them. And so they had, had, a line, they, they had, they had, they had come up with a pact, an agreement. And, and with that, let me explain to you that the Gibeonites said, we're willing to serve you so that you don't squash us. It's really interesting. They became the servants. But here's what happens. The, the Amorites, the five, the five different cities and kings of the Amorites said, you know what, Gibeonites are going to come against us. We're going to go and we're going to squash the Gibeonites. And so with that, they began to move their armies against the Gibeonites, and watch what the Gibeonites do. It says, the Gibeonites then sent word to Joshua, do not abandon your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us. Help us. Help us. Joshua could have said, you know what? I don't like the way you tricked us in an agreement on the front end. Joshua could have made all kinds of excuses for why he wasn't going to come and he wasn't going to defend the Gibeonites. But Joshua had the mentality, leave no man behind. And so what he did, and you look at the next verse, it said, so Joshua marched up from Gilgal with his entire army, including all the best fighting men. He didn't kind of say, I'm going to just send some of the forces here, and I'm going to leave some of them behind here. No, he sent everyone he had. And he said, we're going to go up against them. Joshua was all in. If we want to see, receive, get victories, we're going to have to go all in. We can't do this thing where we're halfway in and halfway out, because with that, we'll find ourselves conquered. And so with it, uh, you know, when I, I think it's important that we recognize that your brothers in Christ are your posse, if I borrow that Western term. Uh, don't go it alone. Don't abandon your brothers. Um, you know, I, I think of, I love what Jamie does. Jamie, each year, Jamie writes a book. God gives him a vision for what the conference is. And with that, uh, he's got the two books. He talked to you about the, uh, the devotional, the Bible reading plan. Excellent. Because he wants to see men in the Word. You heard the vision for that. You know, it says that, that Joshua and his men, they conquered the enemy by the edge of the sword. Guys, the sword is the Word of the Lord. We need to be men of the Word. And so the fire Bible, uh, his daily plan, you know, it gets us in the Word. That's amazing. But when I look at this, the legendary grit, and uh, the thing that I love about Jamie's books is that you go to the back of each of them, and there's group study questions. Why? Because we're not in this alone. We're not in this alone. I've got guys that'll say, I I'm going to do this with some other guys. Let me just encourage you today. Don't go it alone. Don't go it alone. I, I love this picture. I, I thought this was really fun. Just taking a look at this, I found it this week. It talks about friends. Who needs ratchet straps when you have what? Friends. <laughs> you know? Uh, the Bible is pretty clear in Proverbs 27. It says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Guys, we're in this together. Um, you know, when I look at this, a legendary man will fight the right enemies. Uh, turn to your neighbor and say, it's time to fight. It's time to fight. Let me just tell you, though, in the church, we don't have the best reputation for fighting the right enemies. Can I say that? 
in, in fact, in homes, sometimes we don't have the right ep- reputation for fighting the right enemies. We fight against, we fight against family members because we don't like what they're doing, but our battle is not against flesh and blood. We're talking about spiritual battles that have to be fought. And so, guys, when I look at this and I think about this, that uh, some of you may go, but Tom, I'm not a fighter. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Here's the deal. You're going to fight to protect the things you love and the people that you love. And so we're going to talk about some of these enemies today, but I need some help. So uh, are there any guys that are doing CrossFit? Where's my CrossFit guys? Okay, is there a CrossFit guy? That's so funny. One of the guys looked at the other guy and said, don't point to me. Come on, man. Come on, man. CrossFit guy? No, he's, he's in denial to CrossFit. Uh, so uh, any of you active military? Active military man. Oh, the man pointing. You know what? You've been so excited to volunteer him. Stand up, man. Yeah, come on up here. I want you, buddy. It's good. It's good. Hey, any policeman in the room? Any policeman in the room? That guy there. Really? Come on, man. Where's the policeman? Come on, dude. Don't be shy. Come on, man. There you go. Thank you for your service, man. Firefighters. Any firefighters in the room? Where's the firefighters? Man, right over here, firefighter? Come on up, buddy. And somebody's pointing to another firefighter. Where's the other firefighter? Was there another one in the room? No, no, just so funny. So funny. Okay. Where's my master commission guys? Right over here. Come on up, man. And uh, any other master commission guys in the room? Where's the other one? Where? Oh, man, come on up. Oh, right here. He beat you to it. I got five guys. It's good. Come on up, man. Thank you. So give it up for these guys, guys. So uh, each of you grab a balloon. <laughs> and you're like, what did I just sign up for? So there you go. It's good. Uh, so I actually once did something like this, and uh, a guy that ended up becoming one of the Navy SEALs collapsed in the middle of this. So um, I don't want anybody to collapse in the middle of this, so you might want to bend your knees a little bit when you do this and, and make sure at some point you take a breath, okay? But what we're going to do is I'm gonna, we're going to see who can blow up the balloon the, to the biggest, and I'm going to give you 10 seconds to do it, okay? And we're going to help them out. We're going to count down by 10, and as soon as I say 10, they're going to start And then uh, you have 10 seconds, and then at the end, we'll see how big you get. Okay, so you guys ready to warm up those lungs? You ready to go? Okay, so uh, ready, set, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stop. It's good. Okay, guys, you can can, uh, tighten it, tie it up right now. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it's it's all right. It's all right. Not all the kings were big, <laughs> but uh, this is going to be fun. So, you guys ready to meet some of these kings? We're going to go over the five kings, and, uh, and and the five kings going over the five kings. Uh, the first king is the king. <laughs> there you go, man. The king of bad attitudes. So you want to just hold that up? We're going to put the. I don't, turn around the other way there. It might be easier there. King of bad attitudes, okay. And you say, what is this? This is the king of Lashish. And the king of Lashish, uh, that, that name actually meant obstinate. It meant obstinate. And, and let me just tell you, we need to stop fighting with stubbornness and a bad spirit. Uh, sometimes what happens is we can love Jesus but have a hard time loving people. So it's not just about this relationship, it's also about this relationship. That's the cross, by the way. And, and I think when we look at this, it's really important that we recognize the fact that for some of us, our families say that every time they're with us, they have to walk on eggshells. Guys, that's not the attitude we're to have. And sometimes I'll hear guys say, well, you need to understand, I was born this way. I'm Italian-Irish. You know, with that, I can blame it on my ancestry. You know what I'm saying? But it's not how I was born. I've been born again. You know what I'm saying? I got a new attitude. I got a new attitude. And, and so we need, to, we need to fight the cycles and let Christ change us. 
It's time to live with legendary character, man. Uh, the next king. You ready for the next king? The next king was a bit of a small king. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that is so good. <laughs> there you go. The king of rebellion. Uh, it's interesting because when you read through, this was the king of Hebron. And you go, well, what happened in Hebron? Hebron is where later on Absalom, David's son, launched a revolt against his father. And when, and when I look at this, we need to stop fighting our families. We need to start, stop fighting our wives, our wife. I should say that. <laughs> it's good. Okay. We need to stop fighting our kids and stop fighting our parents. And you go, but I'm right. You can be right, but communicate it wrong. And so with this, uh, and you say, well, how do you do this? We need to fight for our families. We need to fight for our marriages. Get the help that you need. Get the help that you need. If, she, if your wife's been saying, we need to go for counseling, what are you waiting for? Find a Christian counselor. Sit down with them. Deal with this stuff. Don't wait until it gets to the point where somebody's ready to leave. I'm walking in a Costco yesterday, and I'm hearing a woman on the phone, and she passes by me, and she's like, you know, well, you know, if that's what she's going to leave her husband about. And I just thought to myself, I'm in the middle of Costco. There's family conflict in the middle of Costco. Don't wait until it gets so bad that the marriage is about to burst. You know what I'm saying? Get the help you need. Uh, with that, God called us to be legendary husbands, legendary sons, legendary fathers. Can I go on and say legendary grandfathers? There's some of you, you look back and say, man, I wasn't serving Jesus. I blew it with my kids. Some of you might have said, I've been a Christian, but I wasn't really serving Jesus and how I raised my family. I blew it here. Man, aren't you glad God gives you some of your grandparents? Gives you a chance to do it again. And you get to send them home at the end of the day. Uh, but, you know, when I think about this, the, the next king that we're looking at is the king of addiction. This is a pretty scary king. The king of addiction. Two years ago, it's Thanksgiving. My sister says, I won't be coming over. I've got to go to Kensington. What's in Kensington? My nephew was in Kensington. Drugs in Kensington. She said, Tommy... They're like zombies here. It's like zombie land. The walking dead. And you know, this cycle of addiction, this cycle of addiction. You know, my nephew says this. He said, I want to be a functional drug addict. Addiction will destroy you. It'll destroy you. You're left a shell of who you were. Guys, some of you are caught in the cycle of addiction. And you say, where does this come from? King Param of Jeremuth. I'm going to give you the Christian version. Wild donkey is what that means. Okay? But what it means, it's uncontrollable. That's what addiction is. It's uncontrollable. And with this, you know, the things of the flesh, some of you are caught up. You're caught up in drugs. You're caught up in alcohol. You're caught up in sex and porn. And all of this, you're trapped. You need help. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 27, can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burned? Can't do that. Guys, you need to fight for your sobriety. There's freedom in Christ. There's freedom in Christ. You go, is there really, Tom? There is. Where's the guys that were drug addicts and you've been clean for over a year? Are there any of them in the room? Is that you? Stand up. That's you, stand up. That's right. It's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Stay standing. Where's the guys that you said, I was an alcoholic and I've been sober for over a year? Where are you? Stand up, guys. That's it. It's good. There's hope. There's hope. God even saves and delivers a cowboy fan. <laughs> Guys, we love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. You know, with this, and we look at this, and, and, and God breaks sexual addiction, and, and whatever is gambling addictions. 
You know, right now, it's crazy. Anybody follow March Madness? Yeah, if you do, four number one seeds all eliminated. I'm thinking, dude, a lot of people have just lost a lot of money. But I didn't lose anything. Why? Because I'm not hooked to that. I'm not going down that way. That's throwing money down the drain. And you go, but I'm ahead. I talked to a waitress this Thursday morning with our small group that I meet with with some guys. And she's like, ah, oh, she said, I'm ahead. Today you're ahead. Today you're ahead. And you go, but I know better. Let God break the cycle of addiction in your life. Before it breaks you. Before it breaks you. I believe in legendary deliverance, don't you guys? That's it. And, and let me just say this one last thing. Some of you have been doing really good and you got knocked down. Is there anybody here a Rocky fan? Yeah, Rocky Balboa, baby. You get knocked down, you get back up. You get back up. But what the enemy wants to do is he wants to shame you when you've been knocked down. He wants to crush you to the ground. No, you crush the thing that's enslaving you to the ground. Don't let them crush you to the ground. You know, the next king, you ready for the next one? This is the king of negative labels. There you go, man, the king of negative labels. And you go, Tom, what's this? Uh, king Derber of Eglon. It means to speak, piercing words, sins of the tongue. Some of you are running a script that you heard when you were a kid. A parent that gave negative labels to you. An ex-wife, maybe even your new wife, they're, they're giving you negative labels. When you look at this, and, and, and maybe it was a, a boss, a teacher, let God give you a new label, a new name, man of God, man of God. Hey, let me just tell you this. The world wants to give you new pronouns, too. God wants to give you not just a new name, but he wants to give you his identity. And it's time for that new label. Say it. Man of God. Say it, guys. Man of God. You ain't a woman. You ain't a woman. You're a man. Unless you're the woman running my PowerPoint today. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's good. Um, you know, when I think about this, uh, the last king. You ready for the last king? It's the king of toxic faith. There you go, man. The king of toxic faith. And the king of Jerusalem, his name was Adonai Zedek. You know what that name meant? This will blow you away. Lord of righteousness. Lord of righteousness. Why was the guy whose name meant Lord of righteousness coming against the righteous? And you go, what in the world? Some of you have been hurt by church. Some of you have been hurt by church leaders. Maybe even a pastor. And you look and you go, I don't understand. I don't understand it. Why was that, why were they so toxic? Let me just tell you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't fix the past. But get in some relationships with some leaders that are living for God. And know how to not just talk about this relationship, but live this relationship. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I look back at my life and I've learned more from some of the people on what not to do than to do. But don't replicate that. Don't be toxic in your family. Don't be the guy that's always preaching but not living love. You know what I'm saying? So when we look at this and, and, and move through this, that... Uh, some of you have been in a place where you've been running from God. Maybe something happened and you're blaming God for it. Hey, God can handle whatever you're facing in your life. You read through the Psalms in the Bible and, and you'll see the psalmist, David and other psalmists, communicating to God how they felt. Understand, God can take what you have to say, 
But at the end of the day, we get to the place where we say, God, I don't understand it. I wish it played out a different way, but God, I trust you with my life. And so let me just say, it's time to stop fighting God, and it's time to surrender to God. It's time to surrender to God, and it's time to fight toxic faith. So when I look at all these kings, and I look at all these kings, take a look at them yourself. What is a king in your life that you're dealing with? So if you look at the next verse, in in verse 16, a legendary man opens up the hidden things. And it says in verse 16, now the five kings had fled and hidden in the cave. Oh, this is a crazy story. You can take it and you could read it through. There's so much stuff that happens in this story. But one of the things is they send their armies on to fight, but then they go, and these five kings, not these guys, but these five kings go, and they hide in a cave. Joshua finds out about that. And what does he do? He takes he calls his, some of his guys and says, I want you to put huge stones in front of that cave. Yeah. The first rolling stones is in the Bible in Joshua. And so they, they, they lock them in the cave. And then after he goes in and he beats the enemies, he comes back and he calls them back and he says, open the mouth of the cave and bring those five kings out to me. And so what am I saying? I'm asking this question. What do you have hiding in the cave of your life? See, there's stuff that hides in our cave. And we're like, what in the world? I, how am I? It's time to bring it out of the cave. It's time to bring it into God's light. It's time to say, God, I need you to deliver me from this. God, I need you to help me with this. And so look at what happens next. It says in verse 24, he summoned all the men of Israel and he said to the army commanders who had come to him, come here and put your feet on the necks of these kings. Guys, this is the fun part. This is where you put these kids, kings down. Yeah, he's got it. You put these kings down. You ready? Put, put the kings down. Put the kings down, okay? And just put your foot. Just, he's doing it right there. Just put your foot right there on the, the neck of that king. You got it? You got it? This meant I'm putting them under our authority. And you go, well, how can I do this? You don't do it in your own flesh. You do it because he's the king over all kings. He's the king over all kings. He gives us the victory. He gives us the victory. In fact, look at this verse. It says that in chapter 10, verse 8, the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. Not one of them will be able to withstand you when you've given it to the Lord. So they put their feet on top, and then it says that Joshua slew them. So these are our commanders. Guys, you ready? Make it happen. (laughs) 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 Oh, man. Give it up to these guys. Give it up to these guys. We'll get it. We'll get it a little bit, guys. Thank you. Woo. Good job, guys. Good job. Some of these kings have been hard to slay, haven't they? (laughs) There's strongholds that we have in our lives that hold on. Guys, thank you so much. One more time, give it up to the guys. Thank you, it's good. (laughs) Guys, stand up if you would. So let me ask you this. Are there any men in the room? What's the enemy you're fighting? What's the king that you're facing? For some of you, you've been facing bad attitudes, rebellion, addiction, negative labels, toxic faith. It's time to put them under our feet. Time to bring it out into the light. And so right now, how many of you are facing one of these kings in your life? Yeah, a number of us. God, facing these kings in our life, God, we need to put this thing to death. It's, it's wild, but what they did is after they killed the kings, they took them and they put them on a pole. They kept them on the pole and then overnight they'd taken them off, but they put them on the pole 
And he just said, that's what I used to face. But we got victory over that. And so today we're going to put it under our feet. But with it, I want you to know this. That God wants to use you in your families. How many of you say, you know what? I need to fight for my family. Where's the men that say, I need to fight for my family? That's it. If you're one of the guys that needs to fight for your family, come up here, man, in the front. Right now, I'm going to fight for my family. How many of you say, I need to fight? I need to fight an attitude that I need God to change in my life. If that's you, step up, man. Some of you go, you know what? I need freedom. There's something I'm fighting. Step up, man. Step up. I need to fight for this freedom. Some of you say, I need a new name. I've got some bad labels. I need God to change. That's it. Step up, guys. Some of you say, I need to step up for my faith. I'm ready to surrender to God. Where's the men today that say, you know what? I'm giving my life to Jesus today. I'm coming back to Jesus today. Where are those guys? There we go. Look at that. That's right. And so today, we're just giving it to the Lord. God, today we give you our lives. And Father, we're bringing the stuff out from the caves. And we're saying, God, give us the deliverance. Give us the deliverance over the bad attitudes. Give us the deliverance over rebellion. Give us over the, the deliverance over addiction, over negative labels, over toxic faith. And God, in our spirits, in our lives, Lord, may you reign supreme. May you be the king of kings in our homes. May you be the king of kings in our attitude. May you be the king of kings and helping us to walk in freedom. God, may you be the king of kings. Come on, guys. Raise your hands to heaven. May you be the king of kings as you give us a new label, man of God. Lord, may us be the king of kings, Lord God, living out our faith in Jesus. We love you, Lord God. We are serving you today because you are God and worthy of our praise. Man, we're going to sing a song of victory. We're going to sing a song of victory. We're going to celebrate what God has done. You know what? There's a song, and, and Aaron's going to lead us in this. You know, we're going to go back into the enemy's camp. Here's the deal. We're going to be aggressive, not defensive. Some of you have been playing defense for too long. It's time to move, move forward, Lord God. We're going to go to the enemy's camp. Aaron, lead us, man. Well, I went to the enemy's camp, and I took back what it stole from me. Yes, I took, I took back what it stole. Yes, I took back, I took back what it stole from me. Well, I went to the enemy's camp, and I, I took. Come on, sing this out right here. Come on, he's under my feet. Sing. He's under my feet. He's under my Satan. The Satan is under my feet. Come on, can we sing this in victory today? I went to the enemy's camp. Say I went. Well, I went to the enemy's camp. And I, I took back what he stole. Come on, say I took back. Say, I took back what he stole from me. I took back what he stole from me. Well, I went to the enemy's camp. And I, I took back what it Come on, he's under my feet. Say, he's under my feet. He's under. Say that again. He's under. He's under my feet. Oh, he's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my Satan. The Satan is under my Come on, we have the victory because of Jesus today. Let's say I went to say, I went to the enemy's camp and I, and I took back what is I took it back in Jesus' name. I took back what is stole from me. I took back what is stole from me. Well, I went to the enemy's camp and I took it back. Took back but come on, lift it up right here, son. He's under my feet, he's under my, come on, say it in victory. Under my feet, yes, he's under my, under my feet. Under my feet, yes, he's under my, Satan, the Satan is under my feet. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has, come on, he healed my body and touched my mind. He healed my body, he touched, he saved me. He saved me, it was just a yeah, I'm gonna praise his name It's saying just the same Come on and praise him Look what the Lord had Let's say that one more time Oh, look what he's done Say, look what the Lord has done Oh, look what 
take your hand and just just lay it on the shoulder of the guy next to you if you would it's good God thank you Lord you haven't called us to walk this alone you're walking with us you're giving us victory but God we also know we've got our posse we've got brothers in the Lord that can stand with us and that when one of us feels down they can help lift us up and we could do the same and help lift them up when they're feeling down and God help us Lord God We're not doing this alone, but thank you, Lord God. Thank you for what you're doing in my life, but thank you for what you're doing in my brother's life. And right now, we pray for our brother, and we pray, Lord God, that you would just allow him to see his destiny, his purpose, his plan for his life, for his family, for his ministry. God, we just thank you, Lord God. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, God's men said, amen, amen.